Hello everyone, welcome to the session of time series analysis. In the previous session, we have discussed different type of expulsion smoothing models and also we have discussed the seasonality and how to use seasonal index to calculate the seasonal average of the quarters or average of the periods or weights of the periods and then how to make forecast using seasonal index or seasonality process. We have also discussed different type of expenses smoothing models like simple expenses smoothing model like in then hold model and then winter hold model also. In the hold model, we have discussed the trained part that means if the data, if the time series data has the trained in that case you can use the hold model. We have discussed detail about it. Then we have discussed if the data has a trained and seasonality together that is called you know winter hold method. We have discussed that also where you segregate the data into three, three aspects level, base value and then you calculate the like trained part and the index seasonal index part and then if you integrate all three you get the winter's hold model which is extension of hold model. We have discussed detail about that. Also remember in the seasonal index calculation process or simple if the data are, are having a simple seasonality not the trend, we have discussed the quarterly average method or simple average method or say normalization method. So, all aspects we have covered if the data has seasonality or trend or say trend and seasonality together. Today, we are going to study a different model which is alternative to winter method that is called multiplicative decomposition method. It is the same like winter's method, but in industry it is quite popular to understand for a layman person, even people from HR background, IT background can also understand this how the multiplicative decomposition method works. But in winter method you have a many components right, three different series you want to calculate and then you have to integrate all three like label, trend and seasonality and you have to add them label and trend and then you have to multiply the index for each quarter and then you have to forecast that which is a bit complex but we have understood that, we have discussed that. Today we are going to study a layman way of understanding the time series data analysis through decomposition, multiplicative decomposition method and also it is quite stronger like winter method and it will also give a quite accurate forecast through this decomposition method. Let us see how this multiplicative decomposition method works as an alternative to winter's method and why it is so popular in industry we should study today. In general, in multiplicative decomposition method same logic like winter method what they do, they calculate the different components like you know they decompose the entire time series the behavior of the data they analyze effectively and they decompose the data into major two components that is called the trend part and the seasonality part. They first calculate the seasonal index, the seasonality component, seasonal component and the trend part also. Then they again they collate them and they come up with a further forecast which is called you know trend line analysis after decentralization and again multiply by the index. How the process works I will explain that. But also remember one thing that you know generally people talk this decomposition method or people explain this decomposition method in many way. Look at here one like popular definition I have bought here like, like multiplicative decomposition method of time series is a forecasting method that decomposes the time series into, into its component like trend seasonality and the residual parts also like in the error part residual components part also and then they first calculate the train part and then like independently they decompose and the one, one by one they, they calculate and then they again they put together and they finalize the multiplication of all three and then come up with the forecast that is seasonal part and that residual part. Today we will not focus on the residual part we will focus majorly on trained and seasonal analysis and a new way of understanding or a layman way of understanding the decomposition method of time series data where both seasonality and trend will exist. Look at this particular figure components of time series session we have bought I have shown you this figure right. I have bought the same figure because this is the ultimate graph where it takes care of both the trend part as well as the seasonal part. So, both seasonality and trend for the timing randomness we will not consider suppose we will consider simple seasonality and, and say you know trend part together look at over a period of time the data has a seasonality and trend it is not only seasonal, it is not only seasonals, data is having a trend also, look at data is having a trend also. So, therefore, 
सिंपल क्वार्टरली एवरेज और सिंपल एवरेज और से नॉर्मलाइजेशन मेथड कैनॉट बी यूज हेयर बट इफ यू हैव ओनली सीजनलिटी नो अप ट्रेंड डाउन ट्रेंड देन क्वार्टरली एवरेज मेथड इज वेरी पॉपुलर बट दिस मेथड इज मच मोर पावरफुल दैन एक्चुअली सिंपल सीजनल इंडेक्स कैलकुलेशन और क्वार्टरली एवरेज मेथड सिंपल एवरेज मेथड सो लेट सी हाउ इट वर्क एंड हॉट आर द प्रोसेस इन्वॉल्व और द स्टेप्स इन्वॉल्व अंडर यू नो मल्टीप्लीकेटिव डिकम्पोजिशन मेथड एंड विथ ए न्यूमेरिकल इलेस्ट्रेशन विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोसेस एंड द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ दिस डिकम्पोजिशन मेथड दैर इज अनदर प्रोसेस कॉल एडिटिव डिकम्पोजिशन मेथड वी आर नॉट डिस्कसिंग दैट विल बी रेस्ट्रिक्टिंग आवर डिस्कशन ओनली ऑन मल्टीप्लीकेटिव डिकम्पोजिशन मेथड सो देर आर फाइव मेजर स्टेप्स इन दिस डिकम्पोजिशन मेथड और मल्टीप्लीकेटिव डिकम्पोजिशन मेथड वन इज दैट फर्स्ट कैलकुलेट द मेजर स्टेप्स इज दैट कैलकुलेट द इंडेक्स लाइक क्वार्टरली एवरेज और सिंपल एवरेज यू नीड टू फाइंड द इंडेक्स सो दैट इंडेक्स इज हेयर कैलकुलेट द सीजनल इंडेक्स बट बिफोर दैट हेयर इन इन क्वार्टरली एवरेज वॉट यू डू यू टेक द ऑल क्वार्टर डेटा एंड टेक द एवरेज एंड कैलकुलेट द ग्लोबल एवरेज एंड डिवाइड दिस टोट क्वार्टर एवरेज बाय द ग्लोबल एवरेज राइट द ओवरऑल एवरेज यू केट द इंडेक्स बट हेयर यू डोंट डू दैट यू कैन फॉलो दैट ऑफ दैट प्रोसेस ऑल्सो टू गेट द सीजनल इंडेक्स हेयर विल यूज ए डिफरेंट अप्रोच दैट इज कॉल्ड सेंटर मूविंग एवरेज यूजिंग दैट सी नॉट ओनली नॉट ओनली द क्वार्टरली एवरेज डेटा and then they then total of them by the total global average or overall average we will not follow that process of calculating the index here we will follow a different method called center moving average there is a merit i'll discuss that in the in, in the excel so we'll calculate the center moving average simple moving average you know using that concepts we'll calculate the center moving average using the center moving average we'll calculate the seasonal index so then step one step two are over once you get the seasonal index that component that seasonal component part are done now right then what you have to do you have to decisionalize the data look at this this data are to some extent seasonal data so you have to decisionalize the data into a trend line format so seasonality has to be removed by dividing the data actual data by the index so then you will get a decisionalized data this decisionalized data which you will find say in step 3 once you get the decisionalized data using this decisionalized data you use a trend line or regression line there you will find the trend of the data as per the pattern of how the data has behaved in the past accordingly we will get the forecast but in a trend line manner because you are using simple regression line or trend line analysis so you will get it but that is the forecast based on your decisionalized data because the seasonality you have removed seasonality you have removed right so you have bought a decisionalized data how to do that that i'll tell you and then you have prepared a decisionalized data by removing the seasonal index by using the seasonal index or removing the seasonality and then you use the trend line you get the forecast that forecast is nothing but your forecast using the trend line analysis or using decisionalized data and then at the again this forecast cannot be the final forecast you have to multiply with the index again with the index again so that you get again zigzag pattern or seasonal pattern of the data that means in 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 a simple manner i can tell you that suppose you have a data like this you have a data like this and suppose this data has a seasonality and trend and you want to make forecast for the next say next year so in that case your first you calculate the decisionalized data so bring this particular peak into here bring this down here decisionalize the data this steps i'll discuss in the excel don't worry and then this this decisional down all down you bring it up all up you bring it down by dividing the index effectively you found a decisionalized line so you can see that let me put a different color you will get to know look at this here you found different type of point look at the yellow points here you are actually getting decisionalized data you got the decisionalized data so this data you store this this is nothing but your decisionalized time series look at this this is nothing but a decisionalized time series so now what do you do using decisionalize this data and the trend line analysis you make the final forecast for this particular year that you want to calculate right for this particular year you want to calculate and then what do you do this is not your final forecast again you multiply the index for each quarter you index and then you will get the decisionalized data again say like this the way you have got the previous data your forecast also will come like this this is the final forecast so how this adjustment or decisionalization and again trend line and the adjustment final adjustment are done let us illustrate that through example of 
time series data. So, here is the one data sets I have bought for the illustration purpose. If you look at the data pattern here, so suppose I have, we have 3 years data, year 1, year 2, year 3, right. And say quarter wise data, I can show you the monthly data also which follow seasonality and trend together, but let us focus on the quarterly basis data. So, you have the 4 quarter data every year and there for these quarters I have mentioned for our understanding as a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Suppose 3 years data you have. You might have 4 years, 5 years data that will be easier for you to do the calculation here. Suppose minimum 3 years data you have and with this data we will make the forecast for the final year, right? For the fourth year, we will make the forecast using the decomposition method. Remember here we are not using the winter's hold method. We are using a alternative method which is very popular in industry that is called the multiplicative decomposition method. So now look at the data pattern. First you need to understand you have to draw the graph of the data whether the, this data really has a seasonality or not or the data has a trend or not. I have discussed that in a previous many sessions about that first you have to understand the data behavior. Here also suppose if you look at this particular data you see for every year you know in first quarter say that means April, May, June this first quarter the sales are quite low fifth that means again first quarter and then here look at here sales are quite low. So, every year this first quarter sales are you know quarter 1, quarter 1, quarter 1 sales are quite low. But if you look at the data and third year third quarter look at the third quarter data quarter 3 if you see look at quarter 3 look at quarter 3 they have a quite high sell. So, that means in every year the, the third quarter is coming out to be a high sell and first quarter are all having low sell. So, suppose this is the data pattern and based on this data and the graph we could realize that the data has a seasonality and also first confirmation that data has a seasonality. So, seasonality we understood the data involved seasonality. Now, think about that whether the data has a trend or not. If the data does not have trend, then no need to use the decomposition method. You can go back to the you know simple quarter average method or say simple average or normalization process and we can make the forecast which is very good. But now, we are seeing the data and we want to see whether there is a trend also not, uptrend or downtrend. Look at the data, it started with 108, within 3 years it is ended up with 168 and on an average if you see the data pattern, they have a uptrend also. Look at the data even if you see the graph you know it is to some extent it has a uptrend. I will show you in another graph the uptrend data are there or not. But here we could see the data has a uptrend also. So, this confirms that the data has a seasonality and data has a trend together. So, both when the data has both seasonality and trend you cannot use winter method, you cannot use a hold model, you cannot use say you know simple quarter average method for to bring the better accuracy you cannot use exponential method, you cannot use moving average model also. Not a single model will come up with the best accuracy with better forecast. So, the only option is that either follow winter method or this decomposition method. So, let us go to illustrate the decomposition method. In order to illustrate that I will go to excel directly and these 5 steps that I have mentioned here, these 5 steps I will elaborate through numerical examples. Now, let us go to the excel and let us illustrate the multiplicative decomposition method through through this particular numerical examples. I have done all the you know illustration here. Uh, I believe the excel sheet is visible to you. Look at the data here. The same data that we have illustrated this for you know winter method also, but since it is a alternative to winter method the decomposition multiplicative decomposition method. So, we will take the same data and we will find the results. So, here quarter wise data are been given here. Now, look at here same data. So, first step what is that let me delete this forecast value. I will not put the forecast value here now. At the end we will get this forecast value. Now, first step is the you know center moving average. So, how we have calculated center moving average? Look at the first step. So, take the average of first 4 quarter. Look at the average of first 4 quarter. You drag to the data. Now, in the next column what do you do? Take the average, drop the first period like moving average, drop the first period take the next 4 period and take the average. Effectively you are including the first period of the next year. Look at here. So, we have taken the average of that. 
Now, if you take the average of this value, 131 and 133, these two simple average, you will get the center moving average for third period. So, this is the average value for third period, but the center moving average. Two times you have taken the average, and then you have taken the average of them. So, this is called the center moving average. What actually you have done, this process can be illustrated in another manner. In column number G, I have done it. Effectively, since you have the data to some extent uptrend and as well as the seasonality also. So, you are trying to integrate the impact of the data in a sequential manner. So, here, here you can see the center moving average for the third period. From third period onwards, you have to start. What do you do? You take the actual value of third period, look at the C4, actual value of third period, then actual value of the preceding period, actual value of the succeeding period as it is, then 50 percent of the first quarter and 50 percent of the fifth quarter. Fifth quarter means again first quarter. So, effectively you have taken all quarter data, but you are taking by total by 4, you are taking the centered average for third period. This, that is the center point of the data from 1 to 5. That is the center point of data from 1 to 5. So, center point among them is the 3, so third period. So, third period onwards you have to start. For example, you know if you take the monthly data, if you have a 12 periods data, your first period of center moving average will start from July month onwards, right? Because that is the middle point of the data. Initially, you will have the data and preceding data and the succeeding data, and July will be the center point. From there, you have to drag your center moving average. So, whatever the process you can follow, not a matter whether quarterly or monthly as it is. So, this you know, first average, first simple average, first four period and the second four period, and then you take the average of them, you will get the average of average, you get the center moving average, or you can follow this calculation also like. 50 percent of the first and the 50 percent of the fifth and in middle three as it is by four. So, all will be the same. So, this way we have calculated the center moving average first step, right. Now, here if you see what happened, look at suppose you know either f or g, any one you can follow, suppose g. So, here you can see the average value for third quarter, here we found, again here we also found the average of third quarter. This is third quarter, actually in third means seventh, seventh is nothing but the third, right, seven, three, seven and eleven are of same, but based on the 3 years data only, we can get only 2, two representative of third quarter of every year. So, third and seventh information we found. For seventh period, you, are, you had actually 159, but the average center moving average you found here is a 141, not 159, you found the center moving average 141. So, two data you have, right. So, it is the two references. From that you will get the index. Objective is to get the index. Look at the here, the blue one, objective is to get the seasonal index. That you are trying to find, right, through center moving average process. Simple quarter average also you can follow, you may get to get the index also. But here, people follow the center moving average because they try to find the interlink among the data, right, correlation among the data through the center moving average. But you, it is not mandatory that you have to follow that. You can follow simple, you know, quarterly average data also to get your index. Ultimately, the goal is to get the index so that you can decentralize the data, third steps, and then you can trade, you can get the trend line and you get the forecast through trend line through regression. And then again, you multiply the index and then you get back your final forecast. Like again, you go back to the zigzag pattern. So now here you see, so this data you found an actual data for third period is 150. You divide the actual by the average data, center moving average data, you will get the index. Here in column number H, we found the index actual by the average data, right. So, we found the index like you know in winter method we have used similar like actual by the average of that period or that year, we got the initial value of index. So, here also we found the index, right, seasonal index. But here you are preferring some center moving average process to get your index. So, now you got one index again for seventh quarter, seventh period you can get one more index, right, like 159 by the center moving average of that period, 141 you will get another index. So, which one to take 1.13 or 1.12? Both are having more than one. That is because third quarter for this data, third quarter of every year has a higher sell. So, we are getting index more than one, not a matter, but which one to take? You take the average of them again. So, here we have taken the average of these two as the final, final index for that particular quarter. So, now that is fixed. That will be even for fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, third quarter index will be this one. It is fixed now. For every year, you know index is fixed now. So, in third year, 11th quarter, the index will be fixed. Look at 1.13, I have kept 1.13 here also as a representative for 11th quarter index. So, index for third quarter is finalized now. Similarly, based on these three years data, if you have more data, you may get a more index, dummy index and you can take the average of them which will be more appropriate perhaps. Now, similarly for second quarter, now so for fourth quarter, you have got one index here using center moving average and one, you got one more index here also 
for fourth quarter here. Look at here. This is also fourth quarter index. So two index you found. Take the average of them. You will get the index for fourth quarter. Every year fourth quarter index will get the average of them. So this way we found all four index for all four quarter. Now this data you have to cross verify whether that sum of them is four or not. If not, then out of four how much you have to do? Because total index cannot be four quarterly data. If it is monthly, then total should be to twelve. You, I have discussed that in the seasonality chapter. So now here out of four how much I have done that calculation. In case it is it is not, how to do that? Look at here. Actual by to total sum multi out of multiplied by four out of four. Suppose here we are getting almost same, right? So we have not changed anything. Same data. Now we have pasted in column number K as per their corresponding quarter. So look at here. This column first row, like here, quarter one, one zero eight is the actual sales. What is the index for that? Index is not one point one three. Index is this one. Look at here, fifth quarter means first quarter. So index is point eight four. So eighty four percent. So we have kept the index here for that quarter. We have distributed this index as per their corresponding quarter. So here, point nine six is the second quarter. Then one point one three is the third quarter, and one point zero five is the fourth quarter. Now these are the four quarter index. Now we have finalized. That we have copied and we have pasted for everyone. We have pasted for everyone, right? We have pasted for everyone, right? Here also we have pasted because we will be using this data. Now we have pasted this data for everybody now. So index calculation are done now for every year for fourth quarter also we have stored it. Now what we will do? We will get the decentralized data. We have to decentralize the data by dividing the actual data by the index. Let us understand. You divide the actual sales data column number C by the index. How can you do it? So you take that actual data by index. You will get the decentralized data. Remember in the PPT I have also explained that like you have a data like this. Now you have to get this decentralized data, right? So what you have to do? This data should be divided. Actual data divided by the index. This data will come here. 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 This data will remain there. So you are getting a decentralized data. So that data has to be decentralized by dividing the index. Like the in winter also we have done it, right? So same way you have got the decentralized data of each quarter data. Look at 108 has gone up. 108 suppose this is 108. It has gone up to 127. But here if you, you can see it was 150 say. It has come come down to 132, 132. So this way we have, you know, but trend is there, up trend is there, but we have decentralized the data. So this for look at here, 132. How come 132? Actual data by the corresponding index. So we got the decentralized data. Now this data we will copy along with the quarter data, quarter representative. Then we will use the trend line or regression line to get the forecast for the fourth year. For the fourth year. Fourth year, we will get the forecast here on the trend line through regression line. But that is not the best. Again, you have to multiply the index to get your zigzag pattern. But for the timing, we are getting the trend line. So what you have to do? You copy this data, copy this data, and the quarter data, and go to a new cell, new new say you know seed. I have here. I'll show you. Suppose here you can see. Look at here. So this data we have pasted here. You can paste also. Look at this data we have pasted here and the corresponding quarter. Now we will calculate the index for the next quarter, right? Next four quarter. So the representative as x are 13, 14, 15, 16. We will calculate. But using this data, we will use the regression analysis or trend line analysis. Then we will get the intercept and slope. Let's go to data and go to data analysis. Come to regression analysis here. And then click OK. So here you select the Y range. Y range is nothing but the sales data, right? Decentralized data, train line data. Look at the graph here. This train line data, right? Then X range is nothing but your representative of the quarters, 12 quarter data you had. And then label you have to select because quarter and sales information you have also put the first row. Output cell. Suppose we already have here, so I'll paste here for your information. I'll paste in this particular cell, right, to replicate the iteration or the calculation. Now we found the forecast here. Look at the same data. Look at the intercept and slope 124 and 2.34. Same also we found here. Look at 124 and 
2.34 look at here so now i can skip this i'll come back here because i have put a color here to save the time i can show you from here now now we got the intercept and slope the what will be the forecast y equals to m look at here y equals to mx plus c is the general trend or a plus bx so this way we have calculated y equals to 2.34 into x plus 124 is the intercept and you may get the forecast like this look at here forecast for each data look at 13 multiplied by the index a 13 is the x or i can show you one calculation here also here say it would be just one calculation i'll show you equals to m this is m look at the formula here m into x what is the x representative is 13 right next year trend line you are making forecast y equals to mx plus c c is how much intercept 124 you got 155 similarly for second period for or say 80 14 period you will get m dot x x is nothing but 14 plus c c is the intercept so this way you will get the trend line forecast so this forecast we found suppose here we found this forecast right let us copy them copy them you can you know calculate here also just come back to the data where it was we were here right so just paste this data here look at here paste this data as a value so i pasted this data here now so this is the trend line forecast this is not the look at then look at here the trend line the trend line forecast we have made it here as per the line as per the decentralized data this is not the final forecast what is the last step look at the using decentralized trend line to identify the trend so trend we found now four step are done now now adjust the seasonal index with the data trend line data to get your final forecast so what will be your final forecast you already have the indexes right so that use these indices and get your forecast suppose here you can write in other cell also to get the forecast so forecast value will be final forecast the trend line data look at suppose this value multiplied by the index it may go down or go up depending on the weightage so this 155 probably it will go down because weightage of that index is less the quarter is less than one multiplied by the index that's it look at the final forecast 131 is the forecast for first quarter of fourth year that is 13 quarter so which is you know to some extent look at 108 on 116 then 123 131 it is uptrend but it is less now if you drag this the calculation with the index multiplication you will get the forecast for all four quarter look at here forecast for all four quarter this is the final forecast so effectively you will get forecast like you know similar pattern of say you know say like this like this i'll show you i'll show you the graph so here you can see the final forecast for all four you know period so this is confirms that you know your seasonality is also maintained look at third quarter value 180 which is higher than everybody and fourth quarter is again down and first quarter is down it is following the trend it is following the seasonality also so you will get the forecast like this this is what the decomposition method it is easier to understand what you have done to summarize you have taken the center moving average only right and then you have calculated the dummy index but you got a repeated dummy index so you take the average of them you will get the final index you can follow quarterly average also but traditional process says that center moving average to need to be followed because you have to take the interrelationship among the quarter so every time you are taking some initial value and the older value and the forthcoming value and you are taking the average and the average of average you are getting the center moving average which will start from the third period but for monthly data you have to start from the july period okay so now you got the seasonal index and then that means this step is done now this seasonal index and the actual data you get your decentralized data third steps so you get the decision line data now trend line data look at the trend line data then you use the regression line or trend line you get the forecast using simple y equals to mx plus c trend line analysis you get the forecast of trend line that that is not the final you have to multiply the corresponding weightage that is index again you multiply you get the zigzag forecast which is nothing but this forecast easier much easier than you know winter method but i have tried to illustrate both winter method and you know hold method if you look at the hold method here look at the graph of hold method look at here i can delete this look at the graph of hold method it is also very good right it is also very good look at here the forecast it is also following the similar trend look at here it has gone down and then up the winter method forecast for the same data maybe output may not be the same here you can see the rmc value is here but if you look at the you know multiplicative method the rmc what is or the rmc i have also calculated here the 
Are you see? Let me show you the Are you calculation. The multiplicative method error. If you unhide it, look at here. I have let me delete all this data. You can see the forecast using multiplicative method and the corresponding regression line. Like if you draw the regression line from the older data also, it may not be the same like the, the trail line data because you are now multiplying this, this you are getting this value by y equals to mx plus c calculations in may not be the same with the decentralized data. But you got the regression forecast, forecast with the trend line and then again you multiply the index, the index you multiply, you will get the actual forecast as per your forecast trend, as per your decomposition method process. So column number n is your final forecast, let me put a color. Column number n is your nothing but your final forecast, right, as per the say decomposition method. So this the, if you take that and the corresponding error if you take and the square of them and the RMAC, how much RMAC you are getting? 1.56. Look at the RMAC of decomposition method 1.56. I am not saying that this is the best always than you know winter method but it has a good merit also. Look at here for this particular data, your RMAC is lower than you know decom uh, winter method. Look at the winter method, RMAC 2.66, right. We have optimized this. Whatever the value you take alpha beta. Now here you can see the RMAC here it is for Holt model for the same data 2.66 but for decomposition method it is 1.56. So definitely you will recommend this forecast for this particular data sets through decomposition method rather than you know winter method. But both has a merit in industry whichever people want you can now illustrate you can carry forward that particular model and you can illustrate the data and you can make the forecast for the most complicated data sets that is called to some extent seasonality trained put together right and you can make the forecast. So this is what two method in the previous session we have discussed detail of winter method and this session we have discussed the alternative to winter method that is called multiplicative decomposition method. I believe it is clear to everybody. Now one more example so I like to pass to you. You can practice that at home. Suppose data are following monthly seasonality suppose. So in that case you do not have 4 quarter, you have 12 period say for every year. Suppose you have a 3 years data and then monthly data you have. In that case if you follow decomposition method, if you follow say you know depo, decompos, multiplicative decomposition method I want to calculate 2017 forecast then how to start with. You have to calculate center moving average. In that case from which month you should start your CMA calculation, center moving average calculation to get the index for that particular month first. In quarterly average you have started from third quarter, right? But here you have to start from seventh month because you know you have to take equal weightages of seventh as it is and then past say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 months and the following 6 months, 5 months in the back, 5 months in the Sub, sub, subsequent periods or say months and then 50 percent of January and 50 percent of next year January. You divide by 12, you will get the index for July. You will get the index for July, July index. Once you get that July, you drag it, you will get the index for August, September onwards. So for monthly data, you have to start your CMA calculation, center moving average calculation from July onwards. But for quarterly average data, you have to start from the third quarter. The Excel you have shown you, you can do that similar calculation process for same same procedure you can follow for monthly data also. So from July onwards you start your index calculations and then you drag that for all the data, all the periods been given and you calculate the index. So once you, once you get the CMA, center moving average and then you get couple of index you will get using that average you will get the final index and then divide the monthly data and what you have to do you know, you have to start say you know your month and the data say. So in that case this all this will become 1, 2, 2 up to say 12. This is nothing but 2014. Then for 2015 it will start from 13 to dot 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 say 24. Then for 2016 it will be 25 to say 36, right. So year 1 data you have, then year 2 data you have, then year 3 data you have to rewrite in your excel all this data here, all this data here. So once you have taken this, then you calculate CMA, same way the, in the Excel for process that I have shown you, like execution process, then you calculate the CMA and then the index and then the decentralized data and then the trail line and then again 
the final forecast using trend line and then multiply the index, you will get the forecast for the year 2017. But how many data you will get forecast? 12 months data for 2017, like say 37 will be the first month of 2017, then up to 48. So, this forecast you have to calculate for this particular representative or months say 37, 38 up to 48. Total 12 months forecast you can do also. You can practice this data for monthly average, monthly data using decomposition method and you may get to know how much will be the forecast for 2017 also, but the procedure will remain same. So, this is for the decomposition method which is very you know easy to understand and popular in the industry also. So, now with that let us conclude the session of multiplicative decomposition method and the comparison of winter method and decomposition method. I believe it is clear to everybody.